seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. What's up, guys? Welcome to today's vlog. Today, I've got two things to focus on. One is a new scissor and two is a new haircut. And the haircut that we're gonna focus on is a layered medium length cut. So I really dig this one because it's nice and thick. So it removes bulk from thick hair, but it also adds layering and keeps uh, some long layers on the top. So I think a lot of people have a challenge when they have really thick, heavy hair and they want layering in it. I think we cut the layers way too short. So what I did was created a technique so that on top we extend those layers into the back. So it's almost like a disconnection through the back. So you could see how these layers become disconnected, but stay nice and long. So you could curl them with an iron or whatever, but we remove weight by creating concave layering underneath. So I think you guys are gonna dig that. Also, I got a new scissor that I used to own uh, a long time ago, but I ended up giving it away. So today I got that scissor back. It is the Mizutani Acro Type K scissor. And this is one of my all time favorite scissors. It's in the medium price point, which is what I like about it. And I got it in a five and a half inch. So um, it's got a lot of power, a lot of precision. This thing cuts hair so smooth. We use it for the wet cut. We use it for the dry cut. I'm glad to have this thing back in my collection. So I think you guys are gonna like that as well, seeing that. So make sure you comment below. Let me know if you have any questions about this cut and let's get started. Here we go. All right guys, so I really wanna start off by going a little more in depth with the scissor because uh, I get a lot of emails about people asking which scissor is best for different scenarios. This is a great scissor all around. Everybody wants the all around scissor. Um, not a lot of people can invest in multiple scissors for different reasons. So the great thing about the Acro Type K, it's a medium price point. It's still not a cheap scissor, but there's so many great benefits about it. You can see the, the finger hole. Um, one key thing that I look at, it's got that little groove in it, so I'm showing you that right there. That allows you to have your finger outside of the scissor and do different cutting techniques. But the metal it just glides through the hair. It's so soft, the feel of the cut. A lot of people like that feeling. Um, so it works with dry cutting, it works with wet cutting. It's just such a great all around scissor. I like using the five and a half inch. I feel like the blade is nice and strong, but you could get it longer than that and you wouldn't have any issues whatsoever. Uh, super powerful scissor. So the way that we section off the hair, it's asymmetrical. So we go from the parting. So the parting is on the left hand side. That's where your guest would wear their part. And then um, we extend that down a more of an asymmetrical triangle. So we go back to the midpoint of the crown and then straight over to, a, to the high point of the temple area or the parietal ridge, just a little bit below that. And that's how we create that section. That entire triangle is gonna be our heavy side. So that's something we wanna keep in mind. Right now we're working on the weak side, which is the smaller side because it's on the part side. So I'm going through, I'm gonna create consistent concave layering. And the reason I decided to go with concave layering is it gives a lot of movement. Even though this is the weak side, uh, we're gonna do techniques throughout this haircut to give it balance and shape. So uh, we start off creating the concave layering, adding a lot of layering and movement to this haircut. Also, I'm not picking my length right now. So a lot of people would go through and cut the bottom first. That doesn't mean that I don't do that, but in a lot of cases, I go through and I create my interior layers first. Um, I, I take out the weight that I want in the haircut, and then I go and I cut the length later. Also, a lot of people, um, a very popular haircut right now is those really blunt ends. And I think what happens where people fail when they're trying to create that haircut is they go through and they cut the blunt ends first, then they layer off of those ends, which just breaks up the ends. What you want to do is you want to go in, create layers, and then bring that baseline up just a little bit. And what that's going to do is give you a more uh, blunt look, a blunt edge, a thicker edge to your haircut. So you're going to see the ends starting to get a little bit weak during this cut, but that's not where those ends are going to be. We're going to bring this haircut up quite a bit. 
Now we get back to the layering. Uh, one thing with this is that we're working basically around the clock. So all the way around the head, everything's coming straight out using the previously cut section as a guide. I'm only taking about an inch wide section. I'm not too worried because we're working with longer layers in this cut and not a real tight, uh, short precision cut. I can take a little bit wider sectioning. Um, so I'm not really worried about that affecting the overall shape. So about an inch wide section allows you to do the haircut a little bit faster. And I just go through, I take a little bit of the old and a little bit of the new. And you'll always notice that I'm pushing the new section into my guideline. So I'm never bringing the guide towards me. So all of my combing is away from my body and going towards the guide. So I push the hair uh, towards the guideline. A lot of people will shift that guide and then what happens is you start diffusing your guide, you lose your guide, and then you, uh, you end up with an unbalanced haircut in the end result. So you can see those sections are not skinny, um, it, it, but it doesn't matter and because we're working with a little bit longer hair. And as long as I can see my guide, then, then we're good on that portion. So just, again, working my way around the head, um, pulling that hair straight out from the head shape and creating those concave layers, collapsing the shape. Concave is basically uh, above 90 degrees. You're creating a very extreme kind of uh, dip in the shape of the haircut. So you're cutting short to long. Um, and this is really removing a, almost a maximum amount of weight. You could even remove more if you want, if I kick my elbow up even further, but I just want a nice, soft, consistent feel to the layers. The comb I'm using in this cut is the YS Park 334 comb. Um, I, I like this comb because it's, it's great for longer hair um, because it's a little bit of a thicker comb. So if you guys are familiar with using the 339 comb, that's a nice small comb. It's great for getting into those tighter places or cutting precision cuts because the comb doesn't get in the way. But when you're working with longer hair and thicker hair, um, a 334 comb is great because the bone of the comb is a little thicker. The, the entire comb is a little thicker, but the length of the comb is similar. So if you like a shorter comb, which I do, um, that one works really well. So we went around, we cut that entire uh, shape uh, around the head shape. And now what I'm gonna do is start to cut my base. So you can see how far I'm bringing that up. I wanted this to be a medium length haircut. If you didn't want it to be a medium length and you wanted a longer cut, you can absolutely cut this base longer. I just really wanted that blunt edge. So bringing it up uh, it allows me to get that shape. Also, I would just cut this straight across if they have shoulders. Uh, obviously, this mannequin doesn't have shoulders, but if, if they have shoulders, which most of your guests will, um, you can cut this just a straight line across the back. And then I'm going to comb down my new section, uh, which with the mannequin, she has a medium density, so I could see my guide through there. You might have to take that in a couple sections uh, depending on your guest. But now I'm going to go through and cut straight across. Now, this works if it's above the shoulder. If it's not above the shoulder, I'm going to show you how to cut it on this side that way. So if they have a shoulder and the hair's in the way, just elevate it slightly um, just to get a little bit of lift. I don't like the turn the head um, move that some people make. It's not my thing. I think it works for some people. Some people have the guests turn their head and then they have more of a flat surface to cut on. I think a slight elevation works just fine. The other thing I want to point out is that there's going to be shorter layers on one side right now because we went higher up on the head shape so that created those shorter pieces. That side is done. Now we're going to work on the opposite side, the heavy side. So I let down that triangle. So don't be concerned about uh, whether the lengths match up on the on those points because they're two different points of the head. So now this is going to be also concave. So we're going to cut from the shortest point. I'm bringing that entire top section straight up off of the head. And then I'm going to continue my way throughout the head shape, over directing everything to that guide, which will then become a stationary guide. We're cutting concave because we're cutting that short to long again. So you see my finger angle pointing from almost my fingers almost pointing down at the part. And then the back of my hand is straight up in the air. So we're cutting that short to long, which is going to create a lot of layers on the top of the head, but push length to the opposite side. And that is really the goal because when you look at thicker hair, people cut lots and lots of layers on and then people have trouble uh, 
trouble styling that because of the fact that those layers are just so short. You can't get them on an iron. You can't do certain things. Uh, it starts to look more moldy, kind of. So this is just a great way you can see the the length and the movement of those layers. Now I'm going to go in with my Bricado uh, mousse. This mousse is great. It's uh, something I've been using for a long time now. Uh, it's got a nice thick feel to it. Uh, very conditioning on the hair and also has a nice medium hold, but it doesn't get flaky or uh, crunchy or anything like that. So in honor of uh, John Paul's birthday from Paul Mitchell, this is actually the 413 brush. I recorded this video on 413, so it's his birthday. Uh, the brush is numbered after his birthday, so we'll, we'll go ahead and use it. One of my favorite brushes I've, I've used, uh, used that brush for a long time. So we'll go through. Also using the Dyson blow dryer. A lot of you guys are going to have questions about that. I believe that the Dyson blow dryer is a great blow dryer. I've been using it. Uh, on my guests, I use it on these videos. Um, I think it's overpriced. I don't think a consumer needs to pay this uh, much money for it. But as a professional, if you want to splurge, if you don't own a great scissor, though, I would go for the scissor first. So I would get the Type K scissor way before I would get the Dyson blow dryer because it doesn't make your job easier. It's just a cool looking tool. So I would get the scissor first get the combs, get the clips, get all of that, then get the blow dryer because you probably have a great professional blow dryer that does the same result. Um, so that's pretty much my, my review on that. I also have a full-fledged video review of it as well. So this is the Bricado Vibrastrate Iron. It's one of my favorite flat irons. Uh, the cool thing about this iron is that it vibrates as it irons. So obviously Vibrastrate. Um, but the, the great thing about the fact that it vibrates is that the less friction you have on the hair, the less damage you're going to get. So a lot of people will go straight up to the hottest heat with their iron. They'll pass over it 100 times. The Vibrastrate Iron is cool because it oscillates over the hair, kind of works the kinks out of the hair, uh, works its way over the hair, but doesn't create as much damage as most flat irons do. And then also, I usually keep it around 390, 375 because you can go nice and slow over the hair. There's no reason to rush it. And then you get a lot less heat damage on the hair. A lot of our guests, so if you're out there and you're not a hairdresser, a lot of people ramp up the heat so that they can get the work done faster but really that is not the way to do it you want to go nice and slow pass over the hair and make sure you're creating the least amount of damage as possible so this is the last bit and you remember if if, if you remember we over directed the top section of the hair all the way to the front what that does is pushes the length to the back so because we have that length in the back, you can see that disconnection. Do not cut off that disconnection. It's there on purpose. It gives it the movement. The layers underneath it, the shorter layers, give it the depth and give it the kind of uh, volume feel and hold the shape of the haircut. But those top layers are what you can iron and have some fun with. So just make sure that when you go through it, I'm point cutting those layers, but I'm just point cutting them to break them up, not to remove it. So this is the last little bit. We're going to style it. I'm going to show you guys three different styles with this cut. The first one is a fringe that lays down. Some people like the fringe in front. So you can see how nice and soft that angle is um, that we created with those layers. We didn't even cut the fringe, if you think about it. Um, it didn't seem like we were, but we were cutting it when we cut those layers. So we got that nice, soft feel to it. You can see the blunt edge on the haircut, which is very popular right now. And then you can see all the movement with those layers when I get my hands moving through there. So you can see the longer layers, but then you can see some of those shorter layers throughout the interior of it as well. So the next style, I'm just going to take the blow dryer, the nozzle of the blow dryer, and blow dry the fringe up. So a lot of people like to wear the fringe back and over. Um, so I wanted to show that style as well. Same haircut, different style. So I'll spray a little bit of like a working spray. I use the Bricado Firm Hairspray just to give me that hold in the front. And then as soon as I hit it with the heat on the iron, it holds that front fringe up. And that's all you have to do to change that style up. So the blow dryer would be the same. The iron work would be the same. And then you just pop the front up at the end. So now we're going to go through a little bit of curling iron work. This is an inch and a half curling iron. This is a Paul Mitchell iron. Um, I just go through, I, I curl everything in the same direction off of the face. You could change this up, have some fun with it. You could curl every other section different ways. Um, you know, I'm just trying to give it more of that wave and bounce and natural feel. 
like I say to you guys all the time, I'm trying to create salon friendly looks that you can do quick and easy because obviously I realize that you guys don't have all the time in the world with every guest. So the quicker we can create different techniques, the better off we are. So just working my way through, just like the clock did, uh, we did with the cut, we're gonna doing the same thing with the iron work, just working our way through, taking maybe two inch square sections out and ironing them the same direction. Finishing off a couple times on the top. Other key thing, I'm not really messing with those sections as I take them off the hot heat. So you heat them up with the iron and then make sure that you don't really mess with them much. Let them set, let them cool. And then I go through with my hands, start breaking it up. Now it's not a super modern feel to just have curled hair. So what I like to do is break up those curls. So now it seems a little bit dated to me at this point. So what I do is I go through with my vibra straight iron and just pull out some of the ends of the curl, uh, which you could do on, on a little bit longer hair. It's easier because you can wrap it around the iron and leave the ends out. Uh, with shorter hair and some of the shorter layers, it was easier for me to just uh, curl it completely with the iron and then just go through and break it up at the end. So just going through the vibra straight iron, hitting the ends. Um, obviously, I wouldn't do a straight look and a curly look, so I wouldn't want to hit hair twice with a uh, flat iron, but in this case, I wanted to show you guys multiple styles. So finishing up, this is the Bricado Firm Hold Hairspray, and I really like this end result. I love all the layers, the movement. I hope you guys love it. Hope you guys can use it in the salon. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. All right, guys, like always, if you like this haircut, then hit the like button, hit the share button, share this video with all of your hairdresser friends out there. Also, I want to announce a Mizutani scissor giveaway. So those of you guys that have joined our FSE partner program, I'm giving away one Mizutani scissor to you. Our FSE partner program is our live classes online that we do every month. It's $9.99 a month for students and $20 a month for stylists. So it's super affordable and you get a live class where you can interact with us every single month. So make sure you join the FSC Partner Program. That's fscpartner.com. You can get more information on that. We also have a bunch of on-demand videos already of classes that we've done in the past. You can watch those as well. So check it out. You have a chance to win a Mizutani Scissor. I'm picking that winner at the end of this month. So definitely go on there, join. I hope to see you there. Also, if you're inspired by this cut and you're looking for a new hair salon and you're not a hairdresser, then go to hairsalonlocator.com. That's where we put all of our FSC partner stylists so that you guys can find stylists to train with us, do these haircuts, know these haircuts, and you can get a great haircut yourself. So go to hairsalonlocator.com. Thank you guys for watching, always supporting. I appreciate it. Also, don't forget, I got a special offer for you coming up right after this. Uh, so check that out as well on our online store, freesaloneducation.com. Thank you guys. I'll see you next time.